as you key in on verse number 18. First, this is the Apostle Paul. He was on his journey. Remember, he was on his journey from the chiefs and the priests and everything to take out every Christian that he caught so much as serving God or, or anything to do with Christianity whatsoever. His mission was to take out Christians. Okay, on this journey, as we get to verse 13, 14, on this journey, uh, the Lord caused it to where they all fell from their horses. And when they fell from their horses, he was disturbed and saying, well, who, who is this? He said, I am Jesus, the one that thou persecutest. And Jesus began to tell him the reason why he has fallen from the horse and everything he went through. He said, I purpose something in you. And one of the things as we got on down to verse number 18, he began to tell them what his actual purpose was, was to bring those from from darkness unto light and, and to re, uh, uh, retrieve them from the power of Satan unto the power of God. You see that? And, and he said that they might receive forgiveness. Everybody say forgiveness. forgiveness. This is what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about forgiveness. This is part one of forgiveness. This entire month we're going to be talking about forgiveness. This is part one of this series. The first uh, 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 a subtitle that I want to give to you today is acknowledgement. Somebody say acknowledgement. In this passage of scripture here, God began to, to show him, Jesus began to show him, say, here's your purpose, here's what I've been done to you, and I'm doing this to you that the people might receive. Somebody say might receive. Or that they may receive. Let's keep it in context of scripture. That they may receive. So when we see this, we see it's not something that's automatic, but it's something that, 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 that has an impending action to it based on how we conduct ourselves and how we begin to use ourselves uh, uh, according to the word of God. He said that they may receive forgiveness. The first thing we see that forgiveness is not something that's automatic. Tell your neighbor it's something we have to do. That's acknowledgement. And then he said, here's the reason why you have to do this. First of all, that they may uh, receive the forgiveness. He said, the reason why you have to do this is because that the inheritance among them also would be received. And I'm not talking about sinful folks. He's talking about who? The sanctified church folks. Look, that's what it says. He said, the, among them which are sanctified by faith, that is in me. So he's not just talking about the sinner here. He's talking about church folks. Somebody say church folks. The reason he's talking to church folks because primarily we're the ones that has the biggest forgiveness issues that there are. Why is that? Because we all ran into that one circumstance. Somebody say circumstance. We ran into that problem. So you see, we like to use the word. Oh, it's 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 it's, it's uh, what they, what word they use? It's uh, it's it's complicated. It's technical. See, we all had our complicated and our technicalities that were going on in our lives, which caused us to not just walk up in the church, but to run up in the church. Some of us was running. We had our hat backwards. We had our, the aerodynamics and everything to ensure that nothing slowed us up. That day, I really need to run up in the church and confess all my... Anybody know what I'm talking about? Or maybe that was me. I had the low, the, you know, the low, low going on. Running to the church trying to see, Lord, how can you change this in my life? But we were so quick to run to God for change, but we didn't want to catch that part to where now you got to do something in order to get your inheritance now because your inheritance has been hindered by the same one that called you that name, that same one that hurt you, that same one that violated you, that same one that disturbed you, that caused you to be messed up in dreams, that same one that caused all this mess in your life. There's something you're going to have to do that you ain't going to don't like doing. I don't think y'all hear me today. It's something you're not going to like doing. <laughs> but it's something that has a knowledge to it. How many of you know knowledge is power? <clears throat> I have a knowledge toward forgiveness now because I know that when I forgive, it releases something that had been held up by the devil. And because I couldn't forgive for that. See, see like, okay, maybe I need to bring this to right to where you can get it. Y'all need that right where you can get it. See, some of us still trying to forgive our parents for stuff. 
we still got this, 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 this animosity toward mom because she was a single mom and tried to do the best she could. And because she didn't do it exactly the way that you like for it to be done, you still got animosity toward mom. And see, but the real thing is you still got to forgive mom. Some of you don't like daddy because he might have ran out on you or did drugs, ended up in jail, in prison, and all these things. For whatever reason, he felt he had to leave. You think that that's the reason why your life is the way it is. The devil is a lie. You got to stand before God yourself and call claims on the word of God and cause that to be changed in your life so it's not passed on down to your children. Yeah, we can, you know, we all want to say, well, that's the reason. Well, it was because of my dad. Oh, well, it was because of my mom. When the real reason, you're holding that against your mom and holding that against your dad. To re and you don't understand what's really taking place in your life. And the reason you can't get past go is because it's being held up in a place called unforgiveness. Somebody say unforgiveness. <laughs> yeah, we get that in the atmosphere too so we can break it and bind it in the name of Jesus. And some of us still got those people, you know, you had that best friend that hurt you. You had the job that hurt you. And the reason you're the way you are is because of that friend or because I was with the wrong crew and they hurt me or they did. They made me feel bad. Some of us still holding high school issues and all these things. And what our real problem is, is that we haven't acknowledged the fact that we need to forgive them so that what we really have coming to us will be released. Because God's going to have the last laugh. Tell your neighbor that. God's got the last laugh. See, when that devil tried to take you out, one thing God said, he even done this word, said, when the devil said he was going to do this, that, and the other, he said, God laughed. <laughs> God began to laugh about it. Because there's no devil that's going to take what God, you have to give it to him. And one way to give it to him is in unforgiveness. Amen. What we're going to talk about today, I got five principles that I'm going to deal with today. Five principles of acknowledgement that we all need to go through and do that can get us started toward. I'm going to deal with just acknowledgement today. I know there's going to be some areas you're going to want me to go on into or go deeper into, but not this week. I'm going to deal with it on next week and, and, uh, and the further weeks to come because it is such a big issue. God had me deal with this thing for four continuous weeks. We're going to talk about this unforgiveness. Amen. And uh, trust me, you're here because you need to forgive. So you ain't got to look at me like you don't need to forgive. You ain't got to act like you don't need to forgive. But it's there, okay? <laughs> Let's just go and acknowledge it's there and I need it out of my life. Amen? All right, we're we going to be grown today. All right, as I dig on in, I make sure we stay grown, folks. Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. But a unforgiveness is a sin just like every other, 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 other sin. It has a role to play in your life. Unforgiveness does. Just like every other sin. You, you commit adultery. What it does, it attacks your, your marriage and your family. You commit fornication. What it does, it attacks you in your body. Say, a man that committed that sins against his own flesh. Sin against his own. That's, that's the word of God. Amen. Uh, 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 um. Uh, 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 the sin against, you know, uh, uh, what you do with money and finances. What does that do? That binds your hand and sends you back to poverty. It does something. It causes you to have a poverty-like mentality. That sin of poverty causes you to fear now. So fear done invoked, and now you have a fear of ever going broke again. Tell me that ain't the devil. If I've been broke before, and then I happen to get some money, and I go broke again, what I'm fearing? I've been here before. The devil is a lie. Y'all agree with me? But that's how sins work. They impart something into you as an individual. So now you'll always uh, 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 cause a stutter step before it's time to do what's really yours or get what's really yours. It causes some hindrance, some form of hindrance within your life to where you cannot move forward. Unforgiveness is not exempt. It's the it's sin just like every other sin there is. Its role and its purpose, though, that I'm dealing with these next few weeks here is to hinder your inheritance. It's to block and hinder your inheritance. And the only way for that to be released is for you to, I mean, and we're going to talk about it today, is for you to go through these steps and first acknowledge that forgiveness needs to take place. 
You know, that's one of the hardest things for people. Because they want to believe that in order for me to forgive somebody, that's like saying I'm wrong. Forgiveness don't dictate wrong or right, whether that the body, the context in the body was wrong or right. Forgiveness means that I'm a child of God and I refuse to be out of control concerning this matter. And because I was out of control, I hurt you and now I need to forgive you. So either you were hurt or I were hurt. But in the process, we caused a sin to evolve. And because we called it to evolve, I forgive you. Whether you forgive me or not, I release you from this in the name of Jesus. And I only won't talk about right or wrong. I'm just talking about forgiveness right now. <clears throat> but we get our hearts set on what's right, what's wrong. If I forgive him, that means he, he was right. If I forgive him, that means she was right. I'm just like saying I'm okay with it. Forgiveness don't mean you're okay with it. Forgiveness means you're okay with God. It don't mean you're okay with the matter. The matter is, may, may still be a matter. But the matter is not holding up your inheritance because you choose to be on your high horse and say, well, I'm not going to, you know, I ain't forgiving them. Well, I never could forgive them for what they did. I'm having a hard time forgiving them for what they did. No, forgive them and watch God. That's a person that really haven't received the word in the area where they really need their forgiveness to take place in their life. <coughs> now watch this. Go to uh, 2 Samuel. But unforgiveness is where, you know, somewhere we become ungodly in the process. And because you become ungodly in the process, it's something you need to take care of, something you need to do now. Watch here you go. 2 Samuel. 2 Samuel, verse number 20, uh, chapter 24, I'm sorry. 2 Samuel, chapter 24, we're going to read verse number 16 and 17. I'm going to attempt to show you here what it looks like, what this acknowledgement looks like. Now, we're reading a passage here where David is being punished by God because David had Excuse me. David had begun to operate a little bit in pride after a while. He began to operate a little bit foolishly after a while. So a lot of things he had begun to do wasn't working out so well for him. But this is one of the times he is now being, being punished, uh, you know, because he chose to, to number the people of Judah, to number the people that was in the land. It was considered disrespect to God. Let me build you up. Instead of reading all the text, let me build you up. It's, it was considered disrespect to God to go out and number your people because that was like saying, I, I, I count my people versus you count your people to see if I'm able to be to win the war. If God is already fighting your battle, it don't matter if you got one or two. But here they are to won so many battles, so now he thinks, well, go out and number the people because somebody done said this army has so many now you go out and number the people. So he sent the people all out through Judah and Gad and all the other the, the, the nations that were out there to number the people. So God found it as very disrespectful unto him. So he's beginning to punish David. Now let's look at David's acknowledgement here. Which, verse 16, he says, And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented him of the evil and said to the angel, that destroyed the people. It is enough. Stay now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Arona and, and uh, the Jebusite. And David spake unto the Lord, hear this now, when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Lo, I have sinned and I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand. I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. Now, David realized what he had done. He had begun to acknowledge his sin and said, God, I'm acknowledging that I have done wickedly, that I have done foolishly. This is so hard for a lot of Christians. Why? Because the number one issue with Christians is submission. Forgiveness is a form of submitting. 
and we have an issue with submitting because we think it's belittling you. If you read the word of God, every time you submit it, the Bible said the Lord raises you up. Every time you humble yourself, he raises you up. So in order for me to be powered, empowered by God, there is a downward motion I have to do in flesh so that God would do his spirit motion in raising me up. That's a person that don't understand the word of God and what it means to submit. That's why people cannot submit to, uh, 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 to people of God. They cannot submit to the work of God. They can't submit to things of God. Why? Because that is the number one issue with saints. They're on this high horse to think, why do I need to submit? Do you not understand the word of God? If you understand the word of God, then you would see why there's a need that you submit. You would see why there's a need to humble yourself. You would see why there's a need to bring the flesh down. Why? Because the flesh is a mess. It is. Your flesh is a mess. It even tells us in Galatians 5, there's works that are manifested in your flesh. That's a mess. And if you don't get that flesh under control and get it tamed the same way they tame a horse, you're right. you, you, you get that thing up out of there until it's totally gone. Stop kicking again. Stop pushing again. Stop pressing again. You receive that word, that's the word that's supposed to develop you and encourage you. But if not, you're always going to have this problem of what? Unforgiveness. Let's keep going. But David said, Father, I done weak. This is what it looks like. After you mess up, what makes it so hard to say, you know, I messed up? I have... Or am I still thinking about what's right? Now, I know David felt he did a, a right thing. He felt like he was protecting the people. Well, let's go get our account. Let's go get our numbers. Probably wasn't even thinking about it. But after he looked, he said, you know what? Regardless of whether I felt I was right or wrong, I've done wickedly. I need forgiveness. I need to be forgiven. Father, if you forgive me. Turn to Judges chapter 10. Now, we're to talk about these these five elements here that I want to talk about today. Judges chapter 19. Chapter, my goodness. Judges chapter 10. <clears throat> Judges chapter 10, verse number 13. I better slow down so I can at least give you the right chapter on the first time, right? All right, we're going to work with that. Verse number 13, chapter 10, verse 13, Judges. Yet ye have forsaken me and served other gods, wherefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. This is God talking. He said, and the children of Israel said unto the Lord, we have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord. And his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Now let's look at what's taking place here. The first element of acknowledgement is anything that has become your God. Now we're going to just deal with forgiveness toward God here on this one right here for the moment. Anything else that has become your God. What do I mean by that? Let me go down the list. We say we're going to be grown folks today, right? Let's go down the list. Running the streets. Married folks. What you doing at the club? And you ain't with your wife, husband. Every single week. I ain't talking about, you know, anniversary. You decide to go dance or something. I'm talking every single week. Gambling to the point to where it's breaking your family and your household cannot survive anymore. Video games to where you can't even tend to your household and the kids and the, and the mother in your household. She, she or he, whoever's playing, is getting frustrated about it because your time is spent into something else. These things have become God activities to you. That's where you spend 90% of your time and some even more. We got to grow out of this mess. We got to get out of this mess because this has become your God. This has become your priority. Every time you get mad, you go do what? That thing that controls 90% of your time. Every time you get uh, into it with something, you, you got, so you can't wait to make it back because that's what now settles your mind. If it slots, that's what's settling your mind. 
and you started throwing away your money. You started throwing away your inheritance because something else has become your God. So you got to acknowledge, I need to quit gambling. I need to stop spending up the house's money. I need to stop spending all my time on these games and stuff that's totally polluting my mind to where I can. My family is pretty much growing up by itself, and I don't even have any impact in their life. I don't know what my child is doing these days because I don't have any insight on them. Because something else has become your God. To know what's your God, what do you run to when you get mad? When you, get out of, when you get upset, what do you go to? What do you go do? And if it is not prayer, something else has become your God. Something else took the place of where prayer used to operate. Something else took the place of where reading the word of God used to operate. Something else became your God. And God was trying to tell them here in Judges, you need to put away all these things that has become your God because I will not have any other gods before me. Somebody say acknowledgement. You got to acknowledge. So the first thing is, 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 is false idols. Idols. Idolatry. That's the first thing. Idolatry. You got to acknowledge that these idols are has taking over your life and you refuse to let them continue in your life. That's acknowledging that they need to go. We're not even talking about getting them out yet. We're just talking about the acknowledging. See, see most of acknowledging has to do with the word coming in and you giving yay or nay. You give an amen or no man. <laughs> That's simple acknowledgement. If every dime you get, you spending it on something. Every dime you get, you spending it on that same thing. Oh, I, got, I, I know people with shopping demons. I know it ain't in the Bible, but they exist, I'm telling you. Every dime they get, it's time to shop. The income tax checks start coming in in a couple of months. They can't wait. They've already looked in the book and checked off. Well, let me leave that alone because we grown today. They've already looked online and checked off what's coming to the income tax check. Whoa, my God. I don't know if y'all like me through here. I see, we said we was going to be grown, folks. Don't y'all look at me that way. We got to get it under control. We got to get it under control. <laughs> Ain't even took out the tides out of it yet. <laughs> but you showed them checked off that amount right quick. Oh, I'm going to tell you the truth. I know it hurt right through there, but that's all right. You got you to gotta acknowledge. I tell your neighbor, we just acknowledge it. Even if it's a silent acknowledge under your breath, that's all right with me. But we're going to acknowledge these things today, amen? Oh, glory to God. This is tough here. I felt that. Next, 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 18. You on it? And verse number 33. 1 Kings chapter 8, I'm sorry, not 18. I told you, I'm going to give it to you on, on, on the first try in a minute. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse number 33. When thy people be smitten down before the enemy, because they have what? Sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name, and pray, and make supplication unto thee. In this house, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the what sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their father. And bring them where? Into the land which thou gavest unto their father. Talking inheritance. But if they don't get forgiveness of this what? Sin. Then they will not get their inheritance. Because what comes from their fathers is that inheritance. So you end up being stuck to where you're not, not receiving what you should be receiving because of unforgiveness. Now watch this. What are we talking about when he said these people have sinned? Because for some reason church people like to itemize sin as not so bad sin. You know, they're okay sins. 
there's a sin that I can just look over or pass over. There are certain sins that are not so strong and certain sin. Sin is sin. Say that one time. Sin is sin. And because sin is sin, I don't need to itemize it whether it's a sin of my flesh, whether or not it's a sin of my uh, 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 fathers, or whether it's a sin. God sees sin as sin. And because sin is sin, we as a church have to reject sin because all sin is of the devil. You got to get that in your mind until it just builds up. All, every sin is of the devil. Even in, in first, for, for first John 3 uh, 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 says that he, he who committed sin is of the devil. Because sin is what? Of the devil. It tells us in, in Corinthians that, that, that even that, that the devil uh, is of sin because he sinned from the very beginning. He was the very first one ever to sin. He sinned so bad that he messed up all of heaven and the kingdom and God had to kick him out. And put him down there in the earth where he said, well, I'll just make man who's supposed to contain him. I'll just make man who's supposed to rid him of sin. Uh-oh, man are messed up. He's living like the devil. He's living the sins. He's, he's, he's eating from a tree. Oh, my God. Now, sin done passed on to all mankind. Now, all mankind is birthed in the sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, except we be redeemed, except we be redeemed, Except we be redeemed by Christ Jesus, we are still we still got a serious problem going on in our life. Except we be redeemed. Why? Because it's in you. And until you get it out of you, you still have a problem with it being in you. What do I mean by sin? Sin can be something simple as uh, uh, I allowed something that was so silly to become escalated. How come we couldn't talk about it? How come it had to become escalated how come it had to become such a how come it had to become to anger how come it had to be confusing how come it had to be frustrated all these things are products of the devil God's not the author of a confusion so if it became confusing who was the author you follow me if I said something to hurt you God's not the father of hurt he's the father who heals then who was the father of the hurt? You follow me? All of it is of the devil. Until you understand that that's of the devil and start cleansing your life by the word of God. Yes, there are some sins that, that you speak the word over and say, Father, I repent, and it's gone. But then there's some that now you got to get something seriously out of you because it puts something in you so strong to where you now need to be delivered from it because you can't stop it if you wanted to. Now, there's some you say, you know what, I just ain't doing that. And you stop. You did it once, twice, or whatever it is, to look good or to please somebody so that all the friends would like you and you'd look so cool when you was doing it. I know I've been there before. Long time ago, I believe it was about, probably about 12 years ago, I believe it was. Maybe more than that. I, I tried smoking. I'm standing there talking to all my friends. They all smoking. I want to look cool. You hear me? I'm trying to look cool. You know, I, I, some of y'all done been there. You know, I'm trying to look cool and holding your jaws because you don't want to go in because you start coughing and crying and stuff so bad. That's going to be embarrassing in front of you. So you just kind of <laughs> and blow it back out real quick. And they looking at you like this, this joker here. Look how fast he blowing that smoke back out. He ain't even a real smoker. Stop borrowing my cigarettes, messing them up. You ain't even smoking for real. Is anything else real about you? You're messing me up. Until that one day, you know, I puffed it in and they said something funny. You know, a little joke came about. And I went, <gasps> and that little bit went in. Whoa, Jesus, I had to go. Boy, I was crying, smoke coming out of my ears, eyes, nose, everywhere. I was, things were looking dim for a minute. I'm like, oh, Lord, am I going to pass out or what? I was a mess. Trying to look cool. I ain't touched that cigarette again. I ain't touch it again. I 
the time they finish with me and snot and stuff running all out my eyes and nose and connecting with the tears and all that. Didn't touch it no more. That's something I could just say, Lord, I ain't smoking. I quit. But what if I done it for 10 years? Now I got something that need to come out of me. I got something that became part of me. Why? Because if it damages my body, it can't be God. So I don't stop till I'm delivered from it altogether because I can't have something damaging the temple of the Holy Ghost. So whatever it is, I got to put that to rest. Uh, when I, I need God to deliver me from that cigarette. You understand what I'm saying? So sin can be that minute. Until we're forgiven from that, we still got a problem. We need to say, Father, forgive me for even starting this mess. Forgive me for beginning that first cigarette, Father. Forgive my mother or daddy for, for their first cigarette because this thing done passed down to me and I need it off of me. You follow me? All right. It can be minute. It ain't got to be this gigantic sin that's all in the newspaper and on TV. Sin is sin. I ain't messing with them cigarettes no more, though. I can tell you that for sure. That was a mess. Matthew chapter 6. I know y'all will laugh about that later on. In the middle of the night, you'll be laying there trying to get some sleep and just start cackling about that because you're going to envision me trying to get that smoke out of me. <laughs> I know. You know I'm, I know. That's happening right there. <laughs> so the second one was sin. First one was what? Idolatry. The second one is what? Sin. Got three more. We out of here. Matthew chapter 6. We acknowledge him. Chapter 6, turn to verse number. We're going to start reading at verse number 14. Verse 14, 14 and 15. It says, for if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Let me read that again. For if ye forgive Forgive who? So we're talking about one another. Their trespasses, your heavenly father will what? Also forgive you. So something impending there, right? Let's go to verse 15. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither, somebody say neither, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Now, look at what took place here. Watch this. So, our third one, let me go and give it to you, is forgiving folks, other people, forgiving people. I know as well as any other saint around this place, saints, I have been hurt by people. I've been misused by people. I've been abused by people. I've been violated by people. I've been put to death by people. You hear me? There's some people that meant for me to be dead already. But I'm still, I'm still standing right here. Why? Because I was able to go down my list and acknowledge who I needed to forgive. It, don't, it didn't validate what you did to me. But I need a release as well as you need a release. I need God to forgive me for some stuff. So I need to forgive you for some stuff. Because if I don't forgive you for your trespasses against me, God ain't going to forgive me for any of my trespasses. So I can do wrong and just be wrong for a long time. Because I ain't forgiven yet. I'm not forgiven, not because God didn't do what he said or because I didn't seek God. But I'm not forgiven because I didn't forgive. I didn't acknowledge forgiveness. Acknowledgement is a big thing. See, some of us need to make that phone call. Let me go ahead and tell you here. Some of us need to make that phone call we've been dreading to make for 10, 15, 20 years and say, you know what? You know what? I understand it was this, that, or the other, but I'm not concerned with that. I just need to forgive you. And I want you to know so you can put to rest anything I ever had against you. I forgive you this day. 
and I'm forgiving you so much. If you need anything from me, give me a call. That's how much I'm forgiving you. If you need a word from the Lord, give me a call because I am that concerned about you knowing that I have forgiven you. I, I want you to know I ain't mad at you. I ain't holding no gripes against you. I ain't holding nothing against you. What happened, happened. But at this point in life, I need you to know that I totally forgive you without any strings attached. Now, some of us can't do that. We can't acknowledge that. We can't acknowledge that because we, we, we think that empowers them. We think that means I okayed it and, that, you know, and all this kind of stuff that goes on in our life. We think that's the point. No, you just need to acknowledge that I need to put that to rest. If I can get acknowledgement that that needs to be put to rest, I'm on the starting point for a lot of things to happen good in my life because of acknowledgement. I acknowledge that there was some wrong done, but I acknowledge that I forgive you, that you know not what you were doing. Just simple acknowledgement. So people, it's some people that you need to get with. Some people you need to have closure with. This is a year where all that stuff needs to be closed because you don't want hindrance in this year because God is empowering us with power, prosperity, and overflow. If you want your stuff that God is pulling into you in this season, you need to get every hindrance and blockage that it is out of your life. It's some people you need closure with. Closure don't mean somebody's right and somebody's wrong. Closure means that it's over. Because as long as it's open, it's a blockade. It's a hindrance in your life. Amen? All right. Let's go on down. I'm almost finished. Uh, Matthew 12. I'm sorry. Uh, 18. Matthew 18. So the first one was just people in general, right? Go to Matthew chapter 18. And verse number 21. We're still in Matthew 18, verse 21. Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how oft shall my, what? Brother sin against me, and I forgive him. Till seven times? Jesus said unto him, I say unto thee, until seven times, but until 70 times seven. He said, how long shall I forgive my brother if he keep doing what he's doing? And I know some of y'all got them. Well, uh, let me say that part of people is family. I want to interject that. I kept it underneath Peter, uh, 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 underneath people. It was a subtitle to what we're talking about concerning forgiving people. Because some of us have a hard time. The hardest time you have a lot of time is forgiving your family. You'll forgive coworkers. You'll forgive people down the street. You'll, forg you'll bump people in the mall. I'm sorry. You'll knock people down that you don't even know. Oh, forgive me. But then when it comes to family, you wish you had to knock them down. Oh, I know I'm in there. That's all right. You wish you could get close to them. I'm telling you, some of you were about to mess them up on sight the minute the plane land. <laughs> okay? <laughs> That's right. Some of them, you don't see, no, whatever. I better not see them and we're alone. <laughs> we better be in a crowded place if I see them. I'm telling you now, there'll be a lot of people around because it's going to take a, at least four, five folks to undo undo some stuff. I'm going to take one of us to the hospital. Somebody need to be there with a car. This family. You remember how, let, let me tell you where it from. You remember when you was little. It, we'd go to school and or, or to the playground and find somebody there when it's time to fight. And a lot of times we wouldn't fight them. But we get back home and they so much has changed the channel. Let that brother or sister change the channel. Oh, it's on up in there then. Let them make the wrong flavor of punch, Kool-Aid. It's on. We fight down to all the way down, just fighting to mom and dad come and stop it. Then we get to the playground, we're like, I ain't fighting. I ain't fighting nobody. But we get home, we fighting for sure. Why is it that is that with the family? Why is it this question wasn't about friend? This question was about family. How long can my brother do this to me and I got to keep forgiving him? You know, I'm glad he kind of stopped with the question because my next question then is, do I forgive him before or after I do something to him? <laughs> I'm telling y'all, when I'm reading the Bible, all that stuff started mixing in with what's going on because 
I need a statute of limitations because by the time we get <laughs> we get to two or three, you know, I'm about ready to mix it up. <laughs> well, I got to forgive you anyway. Am I well? Make me a list of things to forgive you for. <laughs> Let me go make a list of things to be forgiven for. Make this one to be the best forgiveness I've ever had to get. <laughs> See, y'all done sent me over in there. I ain't even trying to be in there today. <laughs> y'all with me? All right. All right, now go back to chapter 12. So we've done with people, people including family. We're still in Matthew. Go back to chapter 12. Verse number 30, Matthew chapter 12, verse number 31, Matthew chapter 12, verse number 31, wherefore I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto man. Now, let's talk about this. Our fifth one, fourth one here, or number four. Our fourth one here is blasphemy. Because people misunderstand what it means uh, to blaspheme something. Blaspheme is what you say in opposite to what the word of God says. That's blaspheme. That's blasphemy. And because it, as a Christian, we cannot be double-tongued. The Bible says that the tongue is an unruly evil in us. That's James 3 and 8. It says an unruly evil in us and, 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 and cannot be tamed. And, and, and it's an unruly evil because what we say invokes power into the atmosphere. Everything God ever done, he said it and it, it became an entity. Everything Adam were doing, he spoke it and it became what it was. He spoke that animal. That animal became that. Why? Because when you say it, it, it invokes power into an atmosphere and it changes whatever was in that atmosphere to be what you said. That's why you have to speak well over your children. You have to speak well over your spouse, whether you like them or not, whether you can't stand them or not. You have to speak well over them so that the atmosphere will be an atmosphere of wellness and not blaspheme. Because if I say something opposite the word of God, I've just blasphemed. He said, he said yeah, the other blasphemies, well, they'll, they'll be forgiven. He said, but there's one that's not. That's blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. I was on on website one time, and I cannot believe these these folks, some college students, has set up a website where people come there to get on the mic and blaspheme the Holy Ghost. This was a site. I'm talking about they were lined up coming by the number. I'm just here today to blaspheme the Holy Ghost and then make a cursing remark to the Holy Ghost. Just the black. I'm looking like Lord. I pray for these people. They don't know what they're doing. Young people, I'm talking about 18, 19, 20 years of age at a certain college doing this. Just came to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. They don't understand what they're doing. And that's a curse. They're killing them at a young age. But he said all the other blasphemies you need to acknowledge. You need to acknowledge when you're saying things contrary to the word. There's some things you, you've said contrary to the word that you need to acknowledge and, get, and be forgiven. And said, Lord, forgive me because this is not what your word says. Your word doesn't say I should be. You, when you do things contrary to the word of God, that's blaspheming it. I'm talking about, you see it. The word of God says, do this. You say, I don't believe it. It ain't for me. I'm not there yet. I'm not doing it. I've heard all of them. That's blasphemy. You go out and tell the folks out in the street, well, yeah, the Bible said this here good, but I ain't doing that. The Bible always telling me to do this, but I ain't trying to hear it. You know, we, you hear all that stuff out there. And it's not to a, set to a, 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 a specific gender. It's across the board. I'm looking at folks that used to go to church that are out there now blaspheming the church. The reason I love the church because the church is all about this. They're lying. Look in the Bible. It'll tell you what the church is all about. I agree you might have been at a place that was about that, but that don't make the whole church is about that. And people point and say, well, see, that's what's wrong with the church right there. That ain't the whole church. 
that's one messed up building group of folks. Say that's what's wrong with that building. Don't blame everybody. But they do that with every establishment. Blame everybody. See, that was wrong with chicken now. Nah. You know what I mean? When, when, when Tyson Food had their little chicken thing going on, they could get rid of all the chicken. They didn't say they said, see, that's what's wrong with the chicken industry right there. They said, no, that's what's wrong with Tyson Foods. But why is it when the church, that's the whole church? Church ain't have but five members. How that's the whole church? You know, I was looking at one church, they had about seven people out there dancing with snakes. Talking about they taking up serpent. People talking about, that, see, that was wrong with the church. Ain't no snakes up in here. That's what's wrong with that building. That's not the whole church. Okay, let me get out of there. Y'all see I'm a little touchy-feely in there, right? Let me get out of there. <laughs> but we got to acknowledge when we're blaspheming. and say, Lord, I have blasphemed thee unto thee only. But I can be forgiven, and I beg your forgiveness. <laughs> Somebody say, acknowledge me. You notice I'm not going on in because I've got to deal with this before for, for the next three weeks here. Amen? Watch this. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. I'm almost done here, and we're going to close. See, some of them are little babies trying to get a little unsettling. Some of them, some of them drinking milk and everything. That's all right. It's okay with me. Some of them need to walk a little bit. I'm okay. It's all right with me. I'm going to keep on preaching. You watch. I, sometimes I take them by the hand and preach right on with them in my hand. I'm okay. You know? It's my belief that the Lord's going to bless us to where we can have a, a sufficient kingdom ministry to where we can do what we need to do uh, uh, with even the youngest of babies when they come in. And that's, that, that is my vision. You know, that's, that's every church's vision that we can do that. But until we get totally solid to where we can do those things, you know, we have to cope with a little bit. So, unapologetically, I don't apologize for it because we sometimes we need to be with our kids. Amen? We need to know what they're doing. That's why I keep on preaching. <laughs> Amen. When I first started preaching, they run a little circle back there. I kept on preaching. <laughs> Usher grabbed one of them on the fly, sit them down, and keep on preaching. <laughs> Ain't nothing going to stop the word of God. Amen? So I'm okay. Luke chapter 11. Verse number 4. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is what? That is what? That is what? And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Watch this. What do I mean by indebted? That's them folks you waiting on to give you an apology. Listen. If they in living in sin, and sometimes if they like borderline church folk, you ain't going to get that apology. You ain't going to get it. Stop waiting on an apology. I just want them to recognize and apologize and all that eyes. You ain't getting it. Move on in life. Let them bear their own re recompense for their evil. And you move on. How do I move on? Forgive. Because if I don't forgive, I'm holding up my inheritance. You mean this joker did something to me and they won't apologize. But I got to forgive in order that my inheritance be released. E yep. <laughs> because it ain't about them moving on. It's about you moving on. You got to be the bigger man in some things. The bigger woe man. You have to be the bigger person. And not stoop to the level of stupidity. Because <laughs> the moment you stoop, then what took your place? 
They used to say, you move, you lose. That's the Mississippi rule. So I grew up in Mississippi. That's what we used to say. You move, you lose. <laughs> I'm sure it's a rule in some other place, too. Why do I need to stoop to it? Why do I make it a mess? I said, no, you know what? I recognize that this is foolishness. Foolishness is not of God. Therefore, I acknowledge that I need to forgive you in your foolish state. If I forgive you, I stop holding up my inheritance. My stuff is still flowing. Isn't it somehow somebody can come in and do something to you, and, and the whole purpose in that evil spirit doing something to you was to stop your inheritance? And now saying, what you going to do about it? Now you know what to do. Acknowledge. Acknowledge that that was foolish. Acknowledge that that was of the devil. In my acknowledgement, I forgive you because it wasn't even you that pushed me in the first place. It wasn't you that hurt me in the first place. It wasn't you because it ain't in you to hurt me. Something have to get in you to hurt me. Something have to tamper with you to hurt me. If something never tampers with you, you can't hurt me. But you've been tampered with. Now, I got to forgive you because I just can't look at the sin you committed. Because as long as I look at just your sins, God will just look at my sins. Y'all didn't catch that. Unforgiveness means that I'm still just looking at your sins. As long as I'm just looking at your sin, God is just looking at my sin. But the moment I stop looking at your sin, God stopped looking at mine. Oh, my God, that's a break-free moment right there. The moment I ask you for forgiveness, the moment I get forgiveness from God concerning that event or circumstance, God stopped looking at my unforgiveness. And he forgives me. It's an impending act. Because anybody can address your sins all day. And you know you got your haters out there want to address your sins all day. You can chew a piece of gum wrong. They see you're supposed to be a Christian. Wait a minute, I popped my gum so I was supposed to be a What you mean? I mean, little small, silly stuff like that. The, you do mess around and do something that don't look Christianized. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, and a lot of times they have you wrong. See, they over there drinking. See, they supposed to be a Christian. That's what they do. They, they, and, 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 and they don't know, you, you know, yeah, I became a Christian, but I have been a drunk for 30 years and I ain't been delivered yet. I'm trying to get delivered, but I ain't been delivered yet. If I ain't been delivered, what am I supposed to do? I ain't going to stop going to church because that's my only chance of getting delivered from it. So I got a choice. I can stop going to church or I can just say, I forgive you. No, it doesn't validate drinking. It doesn't validate you destroying your body. But it says that you acknowledge. I recognize I'm going to have some haters. They want you to be saved today and perfect tomorrow. That's what they want. I got saved yesterday. Then what you doing smoking? Man, I've been smoking 30 years. I need to be delivered. Yeah, I need to be delivered. You know what? Go ahead and blast. I, I, I forgive you. It don't validate smoking. It just means you acknowledge. Are y'all getting me today? All right. But the fifth one was, Indebtedness. I need to acknowledge those that have been in debt to me, that I have held in debt to me. Stop looking for that person that owe you twenty dollars. You ain't getting the twenty dollars. It's a new year. Matter of fact, you're gonna get asked for another twenty. 
with the phrase, I know I already. <laughs> but can you loan me? <laughs> Tell your neighbor, you ain't getting that 20. <laughs> I loaned my oldest brother. I know this. <laughs> I know this is on that DVD. I loaned my older, old, 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 oldest brother a few thousand a few years ago. You hear what I said? A few thousand, a few years ago. He done been through all kind of money, got all kind of money back in hand and bought places and bought all kind of stuff. Every time I call him now just to see how he doing, he think I'm calling about that thousand. <laughs> oh, y'all got that too. I'm not calling you about the couple of thousand that you owe me. I'm calling you to see if you're okay. You almost died last year. I just want to know if you're okay. I done forgot really how much you really owe me. <laughs> I ain't calling you about that. I just want to know how you're doing. No, I know I owe you. I know I know I owe you. I owe you. I know I owe you. I mean, I ain't getting it. Stop telling me you owe me because every time you remind me, you, you're causing something to... causing me to get the calculator, you know, put interest and add all that, you know what I mean? You know, give them the, if I was a bank statement, you know what I mean? A few points and, you know, I want my interest points. <laughs> but you try not to go there, why? You acknowledge. I forgive you. To get it now would be in the wrong way anyway, because you're going to hand it to me out of anger. I don't want no curse. You get the curse. So you just teach it. I thank God that he done blessed me to where I ain't thinking about it no more. You get it? Tell your neighbor, let that, let that 20 go. That's right, let that 20 go. <laughs> First John chapter, last script and we don't go home. First John chapter 1. Am I doing all right today? Amen. Amen. 1 John chapter 1, verse number 9. What is acknowledgement? First John 1 and 9. For if we confess our sins, he is what? He is what? He is what? And, and. And to for to do what? <laughs> oh Jesus. To forgive us our sins and cleanse us from what? All. Some of them. All. He cleanses us from all unrighteousness based upon an acknowledgement. Father, I acknowledge. I acknowledge this was foolish. I shouldn't even been tied to it. I shouldn't even been mixed in it. I acknowledge. That's where many of us have been this day. Just to the point to where I can acknowledge. This word should break your inability to acknowledge that there was something wrong. That there was something impending. There was something that was pressing against you. That was keeping you from what you're really supposed to have. There was something. But there's a release in your acknowledgement. There's a release in your confession. There's a release in your acknowledgement that needs to happen. That's what breaks the ice on things. Just the acknowledgement. Because when we acknowledge, out of this confession here, when we acknowledge, that's the portion that begins the release. That's the start of the release. Because he is faithful and he is just to forgive. Amen? Amen. Stand on your feet.